This is part 2 of our video about TA-152, the last variant of the famous Focke Wolf FW-190. For its introduction to service and first combat missions, check out part 1. April 14, 1945 was the date of the most famous aerial combat involving TA-152. There are, however, several accounts of the battle which don't agree in many details. According to Willi Heschke, one of the TA-152 pilots who wrote his memoirs called Jagdgeschwader 301-302 Wilde Sau, three TA-152s took off to intercept a pair of Hawker Tempests, which were flying along the Ludwigslust Schwerin railway line, very close to their airfield. They were flown by Oberstleutnant Aufhammer with Oberfeldwebel Sepp Sattler and Oberfeldwebel Willi Heschke himself. Another German account, that of Jagdgeschwader 301's technical officer Roderich Cescotti, gives a slightly different picture. Cescotti says that four TA-152s took off to intercept four Tempests. He doesn't give the name of the fourth pilot, but he says that Oberfeldwebel Zattler had starter issues, and he only took off a couple of minutes after the remaining three fighters. He flew low and fast trying to catch up. Jaskotti's account of Fort Tempest also agrees with Allied reports, because Fort Tempest were indeed present in the area. They belonged to the Royal New Zealand Air Force's 486 Squadron. The flight was led by Wing Commander Peter Brooker, with Warren Officer Shaw on his wing. Second element was led by Flying Officer Short, with Warrant Officer Mitchell as his wingman. The four Tempests were strafing targets along the railway, but in the process, the two pairs separated, with the lead pair heading southeast and the second pair turning back northwest to strafe targets at Ludwigslust. According to Heschke, the three TA-152s were climbing and heading southwest to intercept the Tempests. But just before the Germans reached the Allied fighters, Reschke saw Sattler's aircraft suddenly departing control flight and going straight into the ground. The pilot didn't survive. To Reschke, it didn't seem like this could have been caused by enemy action. In one version, Reschke specifically says he was flying behind Sattler. The Tempest No. 2 pilot, Warrant Officer Shaw, wrote in his report that when he and his leader were 10 miles east of Ludwigslust, he spotted a single FW-190 flying at deck level. He reported it to his leader, who ordered Shaw to follow him into attack. But as Shaw saw his leader wouldn't be able to engage the enemy fighter, he dropped his tanks and climbed to gain altitude. He then dived on the German airplane, which was flying straight. As Shaw approached, the German pilot didn't break early enough, and Shaw achieved hits with a long burst. He pulled up and then observed his victim crash in a field and explode. Willi Haschke's account doesn't explain this, but it was written decades later, while the New Zealander pilot wrote his report immediately after the battle. Haschke could have seen Zattler crash from a distance without spotting Shaw's Tempest. Heschke and Aufhammer, with possibly the fourth unknown German pilot, pressed on and attacked the two Tempests flown by Flying Officer Short and Warrant Officer Mitchell. Willi Heschke spotted the Tempest pulling up from a strafing attack.
Hreshke attacked, making a left turn, and the situation developed into a hard-turning flight at extremely low level. Hreshke observed that his aircraft was gaining on the Tempest without feeling that it reached its limits. On the other hand, he felt that the Tempest pilot was pulling as hard as he possibly could. Hreshke was able to fire a short burst and achieve hits. The Tempest pilot reacted by reversing his turn to the right. Hreshke pressed the trigger again, but his cannons remained silent. He swore heavily and continued to follow the Tempest. The Tempest pilot was apparently unaware of Hreshke's problem, and he kept pulling extremely tight turns just above treetops. But at one point, the Tempest apparently stalled and crashed. It was Tempest No. 4 flown by Warrant Officer Owen Mitchell. As the combat took place near the German pilot's home base, German ground crew found the wreck of the Tempest. The pilot's body was still strapped in the cockpit, and Reschke reports that holes from his gunfire were clearly visible. The location of the crash was only about 500 meters of Sattler's Star 152, and the two pilots were buried next to each other. The leader of the second Tempest pair, Flying Officer Short, is somewhat less accurate in his report. He reported seeing two Messerschmitt 109s at 100 feet and another four at about 3000 feet. There is no indication that any Messerschmitts were operating in the area, and this was an obvious misidentification of the new and unknown Tau 152. It's even possible that Short misidentified the other two Tempests as 109s. Short reported that the two 109s then attacked them from the rear left. He then initiated a turning and climbing fight with one of them. This was almost certainly Oberstleutnant Aufhammer. The two fighters made several turns and eventually reached the altitude of about 6,000 feet. Short fired a high deflection burst and was able to achieve several hits. He claimed an ME-109 damaged with Cine camera film as the confirmation. Short last saw his wingman turning hard at low level. German reports say that Aufhammer was fighting with reduced power due to a fault in his supercharger, and he was thus unable to defeat his opponent. German reports also mention no damage to his airplane. This is relatively credible as Star 152 was prone to technical faults but it might be an attempt to justify the unit commander's poor performance. Hreshke even says that Aufhammer was able to get on the Tempest's tail, but the Allied pilot managed to get away. The battle on 14 April 1945 is often used to confirm the superiority of Tau-152, which although designed for high altitude, 
we're talking about the age model, still easily outmaneuvered Hawker Tempest, one of the best Allied fighters. But the only kill for the German fighter was achieved by an experienced ace against a relatively inexperienced pilot, and it was probably more of a maneuvering kill. Aufhammer's Tau-152 was probably damaged by Short's Tempest, while there is a good chance that Sattler was downed by Shaw. This is a draw at best. The remaining combat against enemy aircraft for the Tau-152 was fought against the Soviets. We will cover that story as well and make the final analysis of this fighter's performance in World War II. If you want to see that video, be sure to press the like button and leave a comment on this one. And to ensure future content, join our Patreon supporters or donate on PayPal. Thank you in advance and keep watching Showtime 112.